What goes up must come down. It's a law of physics that seems immutable. But what if under special circumstances, this basic rule of the universe might bend or even break? It's January 2019 in the skies over Chestakova, Poland. Pilot Lukasz Szapila is building up a thirst as he puts his stunt plane through its paces in a series of acrobatic maneuvers. And then he does something you've never seen before at an air show. As Lukasz goes into a barrel roll, he picks up a can of energy drink and begins pouring it into a stationary cup. He then places the can down and picks up the glass to take a sip without spilling a drop. This video is wild. Look at him, he's just drinking his drink, living his life, flying upside down in a plane. Since it's hard enough pouring a glass right side up on a commercial flight, folks on the internet offered a wild explanation. Some have theorized that what's actually happening here is that he's flying through an area that has a gravitational anomaly of some kind. Back in December 1945, five torpedo bombers known as Flight 19 vanished near the Bermuda Triangle after the flight commander reported his compass going haywire. Perhaps gravitational fluctuations were at play since we know that gravity is not the same everywhere on Earth or in the atmosphere. But hang on a second. We live in the age of deep fakes, and we've already debunked videos like this commercial jet barrel roll. Could this all be an elaborate hoax? Or is this gravity acting in a brand new way? Let's consult our experts. Forensic video analyst Michael Primo examines the metadata to check if there are any computer-generated graphics involved. So the major light source through the physical aspects of the scene analysis, looking at shadow information, looking at reflections as the user is moving around in the shield of the cockpit, are all indications that this was not CGI. So if the video isn't faked, is there something atypical about the design of the plane? Aviation expert Tim McMillan takes a closer look at the aircraft to determine its capabilities. This plane, I would say, is very likely a, a Zika Edge 540, which is purpose-built aerobatic aircraft. The design is very similar to World War II planes, like the P-51 Mustang, when pilots engaged in dogfights. They had to do a lot of aerobatic maneuvers. Same principle. The plane itself is not designed to let you pour a drink upside down. That's a, that's a whole other side of physics. Then could this be some sort of anomaly causing the laws of gravity to malfunction? Theoretical physicist Dr. Michio Kaku confirmed that gravity is different around the world, especially at the equator, where its grounding forces are weaker due to the centrifugal forces produced by the Earth's rotation. We know that the Earth is a ball and it spins like this. If you're sitting on the North Pole, then for the most part, your radial velocity is zero. If you're on the equator, the, the Earth is 8,000 miles in diameter, so you're going around about 1,000 miles an hour. Gravity is gonna be slightly less as a consequence. This gravitational variation also means that you weigh five tenths of a percent more at the poles than at the equator. But that's a very tiny effect. Too small to explain the fact that he can do a barrel roll and have the liquid stay inside that cup. So how does this work? Let's say I get a pail of water on a string and I twirl it. The centrifugal force pushes the string out and the water stays inside the bucket. It doesn't fall out at all. Kaku says that's because though both the water and the bucket are being pulled downward by gravity, the force of the string redirects them in a circular path, keeping the water inside the bucket. It's a similar effect in the plane where the speed of the circular motion counteracts the downward effects of gravity. This means that he's attained one G of centrifugal force. That equals the G on the surface of the Earth. He is rotating fast enough, 32 feet per second squared, to create artificial gravity inside that cockpit. And that's why the liquid doesn't fall out of the cup. Our verdict, centrifugal force created by this rapid rotation. There's no need to fake this trick because this fascinating property of physics is all that's needed to create zero gravity and prevent the drink from spilling. It's February 2022 in Chihuahua, Mexico. 
Early in the morning, a mounted CCTV camera is rolling on a quiet residential street where a large flock of yellow-headed blackbirds is seen flying overhead at the top of the screen. Then suddenly, things take a strange and deadly turn. The security camera catches the shocking moment the huge black mass of birds appears to fall like rain from the sky to the pavement below. As the footage continues to roll, we see that many of the birds recover and fly off safely. But the street and sidewalk are now littered with nearly 100 avian corpses. Science journalist Amy Title says this footage is quite surprising. Birds are not known for smashing into the ground, so what exactly is happening to make them act this way? Though this strange incident seems once in a lifetime, it's not the only time small animals have rained from the sky. In this video from Virginia Beach, Virginia, a fish is captured falling and hitting a car. And footage from December 2021 shows a parking lot in Texarkana, Texas, filled with a dozen dead fish that have seemingly come out of nowhere. That turned out to be the result of a weather phenomenon known as a water spout. But the incident in Mexico remains mysterious. And all this is nothing new. In the book of Exodus, God sends down a rain of frogs on the Egyptians because of their refusal to free the enslaved Israelites. But while some wonder if these strange incidents could be divine punishment, others suggest they have a more technological source. The alleged culprit? 5G is a relatively new technology that we're using increasingly for cell phone reception. One theory is that somehow 5G interfered with the bird's natural navigation. Birds create a protein called cryptochromes that makes them very sensitive to blue light and actually helps them see the Earth's magnetic field. That's how birds know how to fly south and migrate for the winter. So could it be that this increase of electromagnetic frequency is somehow interfering with the bird's ability to see where they're going. Recent research in the field of magnetoreception indicates that molecular fragments in the bird's eyes enable them to see Earth's magnetic field lines and use that information to chart a course between their breeding and wintering grounds. So what went wrong here? Let's go to the experts for a bird's eye view. The idea that 5G signals cause bodily harm has been debunked, but biologist Dr. Floyd Hayes considers whether some form of electromagnetic interference could be to blame. There was a study published on the effects of electromagnetic radiation on the magnetic compass of European robins, and it affected the direction in which they oriented. But these birds aren't really migrating a long distance. They're just probably trying to find food. And they also have backup compasses migrating by the stars at night and the sun by day. Furthermore, we wouldn't expect all of these birds to fall suddenly like we're seeing in this video. So if they're not being affected by electromagnetic noise, could these birds have been poisoned by a lethal toxic cloud of pollution? Wood-burning stoves and agrochemicals can cause high levels of air pollution in the region. Meteorologist Juan Hernandez checks the weather conditions to see if this could be the cause. If it's mountainous, we're able to have a thermal inversion where we have trapped gases or trapped smoke near the ground. But if we look at the video, we don't really see much in the way of smoke chemicals. Likely, there was something else that occurred. Hayes agrees pollution is not very likely. If they were exposed to some sort of a toxin, we would see individuals gradually becoming sick at different times, depending on the amount of the dose that they were exposed to. So did these small critters rain down during an anomalous weather event like a microburst? We're able to see that it had rained earlier, but by the time that the birds crashed into the ground, it appeared that it had stopped raining, ruling out the potential for a microburst or a downburst. So since Hernandez says the birds weren't blown into the ground by a sudden downburst of wind and rain, Hayes believes the real culprit is a deadly presence we don't see on camera. I think there is a predatorial bird, such as a peregrine falcon, that rapidly dived onto that flock, and the birds panicked, and some of them crashed into the ground. When a large flock of birds form, they call it a murmuration, and it's generally to either provide protection for each other or to find food. This is what he's talking about. Watch how this murmuration of western sandpipers moves suddenly in unison to avoid this swooping peregrine falcon. This is actually normal behavior when a predatorial bird attacks flocks of birds. Uh, we're not seeing the predator up above, but it's probably just out of view. We're going with Hayes here. 
Our verdict is the birds were flying in a murmuration. So when an unknown predator we can't identify came upon the flock, they made a sudden drastic dive that was too drastic for some. That's the downside of flocking together. It's July 2016 in Mineral County, West Virginia. A nature photographer is taking pictures around Jennings Randolph Lake when she sees something mysterious and snaps a shot. Her photo shows a rock formation with an almost honeycomb appearance on its face, like a stone beehive. The pattern is geometrical with straight rows of triangles and rhombuses, which make it look somewhat like a waffle. It's darker in color than the rock face and appears in relief, which makes it stand out. And journalist Eric Grunhauser confirms that it often draws curious visitors. What makes it so evocative is the way that the shapes here and the design on the rock are so seemingly uniform. When we see natural formations, we often think of them as a little bit more random, a little bit more chaotic. But the design on Waffle Rock seems to be a bit more ordered. It seems to have a reason to it. So it looks like the rock isn't random. And Grundhauser wonders if it's trying to tell us something. One theory is that it is a design created by an ancient culture that was trying to leave some sort of message or hieroglyphic and left it in this indecipherable code. If that were the case, it would have been chiseled into the rock. We know that ancient Native Americans in what is now Western North Carolina etched this curvilinear motif into a soapstone boulder known as Judah Kula Rock more than 2,000 years ago. It is considered a mystical site to many Cherokee, but there's an even more ancient possibility. Another theory is that this is actually the fossilized imprint of the skin of some kind of giant lizard left behind in the stone. Specifically, some have speculated that it's the fossilized or even mummified remains of a dinosaur. Sound far-fetched? Well, look at this. This is the perfectly preserved mummy of a notosaurus dinosaur found by miners in Alberta, Canada in 2011. It got this way because it sank into the muck shortly after it died, preserving its skin and armor. Yet Grunhauser has one more idea about the rock's origin. Still another theory posits that it was created by extraterrestrials, either created intentionally as some kind of map for other extraterrestrials or to mark their passing. So could this be the work of intelligent alien design? Though the Waffle Rock Formation is not at all common, similar patterned stones have been found in Monongahela, Pennsylvania, and at Tea Creek Mountain in West Virginia. Still, this one in Mineral County is by far the largest. So what are these bizarre boulders, and where do they come from? Let's turn to the experts. Anthropologist Kathy Strain considers if this could be an ancient artwork. I am not seeing anything typical of what you would see with Native American rock art. It's not a typical design. It doesn't have any kind of structure that a Native American would want to convey. Perhaps then this is ancient writing, maybe even from a lost language? Archaeologist Dr. Ed Barnhart is an epigrapher who translates cuneiform, hieroglyphics, and unknown ancient scripts. He gives the strange pattern a look. This waffle rock doesn't follow any of the rules of making something that's communicating a message in stone. The reader and the writer have to agree on a set amount of symbols, or it doesn't work as a code. When you look at Waffle Rock, there is no pattern. It is very complex and very geometric. There's lots of lines, but there's no repeated or different symbols. If we can rule out man-made origins, what about the idea that this is fossilized skin or scales from an ancient creature like a dinosaur? A fossil is simply the calcium in bone being replaced with rock through millions of years of being covered with mud. When I look at it, I don't see any fossilization at all. There's nothing there that would indicate calcium, like a bone structure, or any organics at all. We turn next to geologist Bob Anderson. Perhaps Earth science might offer some guidance here. Could this be some sort of natural geological formation? You'll see that there are multiple what we call joint patterns here. And what happens is that these are fluids that are running through this rock, either iron fluids or water fluids. 
even magma, was running through these cracks in the rocks and it, it hardened and, it, and eroded away at a different pace. And so you see what's called a waffle pattern. And this is natural, we see it in all kinds of crystals. Anderson says the movement of tectonic plates caused cracks in the sandstone that likely filled with iron oxide, mixed with sand, and formed a hard cement-like material resistant to weathering compared to the surrounding stone. As the surrounding rock gradually eroded, it left behind the iron oxide pattern. Our verdict, this is a natural phenomenon, likely caused by iron oxide flowing into a crack in the rock and hardening into this pattern. Scientists who have studied the rock say the pattern formed hundreds of millions of years ago. So it had to have resulted from geological processes. The fact that it's made by nature makes the waffle rock even more intriguing and one of the most visually interesting rock formations we've ever seen. It's April 2019 in Anchorage, Alaska. Two hikers are climbing the scenic O'Malley Peak when something truly bizarre happens and they start filming. As one of the hikers reaches into the sky, a strange buzzing sound fills the air. She appears to be able to manipulate the sound by squeezing the air and placing her hand on her head. She winces as the sound continues as if she can feel the disturbance coursing through her. I don't like how it feels, I'm putting my hat back on. Journalist Aaron McCarthy says this could be related to a mysterious phenomenon that some believe has long plagued the region. Some have speculated that perhaps the noise has something to do with the Alaska Triangle, which is an area of Alaska that stretches from Juneau to Anchorage to Ukiavik. And some of the things that are said to occur there are energy vortexes and bizarre magnetic activities. McCarthy says a number of unexplained incidents have occurred in this geographic area that ended in tragedy. In 1950, a U.S. military plane went down in the Alaska Triangle, and 44 people on board disappeared without a trace. Then, in October 1972, a plane carrying two congressmen went down in the Alaska Triangle, and no trace of that plane has ever been found either. But McCarthy says there's an even more nefarious idea about what could be causing this strange mountaintop anomaly. Another theory is that this maybe is 5G. 5G is a wireless network that can be used to transmit information over radio waves. Some believe that 5G caused mass bird die-offs, harm that has come to trees, and some even believe that it can cause cancer or other health issues. The number of disappearances within the Alaska Triangle is three times higher than the national average. Were our hikers experiencing the mysterious force that's snatching planes from the sky? Or perhaps they were caught in the crossfire of allegedly dangerous 5G radio waves. With all these mounting questions buzzing around, my head is starting to buzz too. Let's tune in to what our experts are saying. Meteorologist Juan Hernandez admits that many planes have mysteriously vanished in the Alaska Triangle, but he has serious doubts that this has anything to do with the supernatural. Given the extreme weather in Alaska, you can actually get several inches of snow per hour. So if there is a plane crash, it's possible within a matter of hours that is completely covered by snow. Something that goes missing in Alaska is gonna be extremely difficult to find. So could our hikers have been intercepted by supposedly harmful 5G waves? Physicist Dr. Matthew Shinaga says there's no scientific evidence supporting this. 5G does not have any visible or auditory effects, simply because it's the wrong wavelength, frequency, and amount of energy. If they were able to do any sort of harm, then so can visible light colors, which contain significantly more energy. So if it's not 5G and it's not the Alaska Triangle, what's really going on here? Shadaga says the answer is shocking. I actually fear for the safety of the individual in the video because what we're seeing is a relatively common occurrence before a lightning strike. Hernandez explains that cold weather conditions like those seen in the video can cause a buildup of electric energy. It's possible that she is somehow interacting 
with the electric field in the area and creating a static electricity. A lot of times when we feel static charge, that usually means that lightning is very close to striking. Lightning occurs when electrical charges in the air and on the ground reach a critical imbalance. There's a moment before it strikes when static electricity is building in the air near the ground. The rapid transfer of energy restores the equilibrium. And Shadaga says this buildup of energy can create a sound. That buzzing sound can be created by electricity since sound is simply caused by movement of atoms. And if you have electrons within atoms moving around, the atoms as a whole will be moving around, and you actually can create sound, which is simply changes in air density. Our verdict? This was simply a buildup of static electricity, and a dangerous one at that. But thankfully, our hikers made it out alive and well. Alaska may be full of mysteries, but this strange sound is no longer one of them.